what's the economic crisis like in Jannah? What's the law, la, you know, the, the poorest person in paradise? What does he get? So Allah answers Musa and he says to him, It'll be for the last man to exit the fire. فَإِذَا خَرَجَ مِنَ النَّارُ قَالَ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي نَجَّاكِ مِنِّي لَمْ يُعْطَ أَحَدًا عَطَاءً أَفْضَلُ مِنِّي The man is the last person to exit the fire, hasn't seen Jannah, hasn't gone to paradise, doesn't know about anything about paradise, just by him exiting the fire, he turns to Allah in dua and says, Alhamdulillah, who saved me from that fire, no one who has ever been born has been given anything greater than that. فَتُنْبَتُ لَهُ شَجَرًا So Allah will plant a tree. So the man shall run to that tree, sit under the tree, and he shall think, that's it. I don't want anything else, man. I just left that fire. And then Allah will plant another tree that's a little bit larger, that has a stream. And the man shall see it. And Allah shall say to the man, Ya Abdi, what do you need? And the man will say, oh Allah, I'm happy with what I've been given, but just, you know, can I go to that tree? It's got a river, it's got a little stream, and, you know, maybe I can do something with it. A little bit later, another tree, another tree, until the man is brought close to hear the sounds of paradise. فَيَقُولُ يَا رَبُّ أُدْنُنِي مِنْهُمْ My Lord, just let me be close to them. Not with them, close to them. So Allah shall bring him to the gates of Jannah, as the Prophet ﷺ says, وَيُحَيِّئُ لَهُ أَنَّهَا مَلْأَ But when the man looks in, it will be shown to him that it's completely full, no vacancy. And then Allah shall say to this abd, to this humble servant, يَا عَبْدِي أَتَرْضَى أَنْ يَكُونَ لَكَ مُلْكُ مَلِكٍ مِنْ مُلُوكِ الدُّنْيَا my servant, would it suffice you if I gave you the dominion and the kingdom that one of the kings of your worldly life enjoyed? Would you be happy if I gave you, you know, the kingdom of a king from the world that you used to live upon? The man shall say, man, Buckingham Palace? I'll take that. <laughs> king. So Allah shall say, لك هذا. I grant you that. وَمِثْلَهُ 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 You're given that over and over and over and over again. And on the fifth one, that person, that servant shall say to Allah, اِكْتَفَيْتِ يَا رَبْ That's enough. So Allah shall say to him, لَكَ كُلُّ ذَلِكْ وَعَشْرُ أَمْثَالِ I give you those five and ten times their amount. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَلَكَ مَا And to you would be what will please you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To you will be what will please you. وَلَكَ مَا اشْتَهَتْ نَفْسُكْ And to you will be what you wish for. And the man shall be pleased. So Musa, hearing this from Allah, he then asks, Ya Rabb, فَمَا بَالُ أَعْلَاهَا Oh Allah, if that's minimum wage, I'm a prophet. <laughs> what about, you know, like, what about the higher up in Jannah? So Allah says, لَا تَسْأَلْ عَنْهُمْ يَا مُوسَى Don't ask about them. فَلَمْ تَرَى عَيْنْ وَلَمْ تَسْمَعْ أُذُنْ وَلَمْ يَخْتُرْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human being could ever comprehend it. This is an abridged narration of the life and times of Musa with pertinent lessons for us. Fate and Qadr, there is a greater power and authority ruling and governing and influencing your life. Allah gives you choices. Allah pushes you in directions. Allah gives you intuition. Allah helps you with your decisions. The closer you come to Him, the closer He will be with you the more powerful his effect will be in your life. Repentance, doesn't matter how great your harm upon others, 
your ability to change the negative things in your life is within your hands. It's your choice, just like Musa stopped. At that moment, he's about to harm that second person. He stops. He recognizes his error. He moves back, turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cleanliness of spirit and heart shines through to others. You want to have a good spouse, you want to have a good husband, you want to have a good wife, you want to have nice kids who will be obedient, who will take care of you in your older years. I know you're sitting here 20 years old, but you'll get old. You want to have an easy, cushy life? Let your character shine. Let people see you the way those two women saw Musa. The moment they saw him, they ran to their father. They saw his character, they saw who he was, not his faith. And that's why the Prophet separated <coughs> Deen and Khuluq. Your character is powerful. And there's no easy way. You can't just fake it. I'm tired of people faking it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hypocrisy. May Allah protect us from just wanting people to think of us as devout. The Prophet says, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمَ الشِّرْكَ الْخَفَيْهِ The thing I hate and fear for you the most is shirk, joining others in the worship of Allah in a hidden manner. They said, how? أَنْ يَقُومَ الرَّجُلْ فَيُزَيِّنُ صَلَاتَهُ لِمَا يَرَى مِنْ نَظَرِ الرَّجُلِ إِلَيْهِ Its example is that a man stands up to pray, but notices someone's looking at him, so he makes sure he's really, you know, like, MashaAllah. <laughs> That's the example the Prophet says is the worst thing, the most feared thing he has for our Ummah. People who walk amongst us, who talk like us, who dress like us, who grow the beards, who wear the short pants, who do everything that is outward, but forget the inward. Forget that spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that spiritual touch that we have to come back to our Lord, to our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't fake it. It takes time to develop, it takes effort. <coughs> and finally, the adversity that you face and the hardships that you face in life have a great reward for you and it is Jannah. It is that abode that Musa asks Allah about. Don't feel shy to ask Allah. The Prophet of Allah, Musa asks Allah, what are, what's in Jannah? How do I get it? What, what can I do to make myself near it? Come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come to the way of Islam, come to the path of faith. Now, just two points before I conclude. I know my time is up. Uh, with regards to sisters and education, really important. And inshallah, I'll email our elder and brother, Sheikh Abdul Wahid, uh, about my thoughts. But with regards to education, I'm just going to give you a personal example. So I'm not going to talk about it from a religious perspective. Alhamdulillah, my wife, she's by training qualified accountant. Uh, we have two children, both under the age of two and a half. She's studying part-time law at the University of Western Australia. I drive her to her lectures, not because she can't drive, but because I babysit the kids in the car for the hour and a half that she's in lecture. All right? So this is the sacrifice that I as a Muslim man make for the higher education of my wife. Not because I don't earn an income, alhamdulillah Allah provides, right? Not for her because she's going to be, you know, the, some hotshot lawyer, but it's to enlighten the mind, it's to enlighten the spirit, it's to search and have knowledge of what is happening with us, amongst us, in our community, it's to be advocates, it's to have insight into the workings of the world. So I sit there, I take the kids to the park, for the hour and a half, she has her lecture, then her tutorial. Sometimes she misses the tutorial because the kids, you know, are running around. <laughs> and it's hot and there's, you know, so give her a call, hurry up. And then we go. Three times a week, right? Islamic forms of education. Nothing in Islam ever prohibits a person from learning. Islam for a person, man or woman. But don't lose yourself. Don't come to university with your aim, oh, Abi, Dad, uh, I need to stay a little bit back at 